Every 18 months, somewhere on planet Earth, the sun goes black in the middle of the day. One minute it's bright and sunny outside, and the next, the sun is covered in darkness. Birds even start going back to their nests to fall asleep. You can even see stars in the middle of the day. That's what happens when we have a solar eclipse. Of course, the sun is far, far further than is the moon, but because of the moon's proximity, it's able to cover the disk of the sun in the sky in certain points around the world once every 18 months. But you have to be in just the right place, in just the right time, and even then hope for no cloud cover, like when we had a partial eclipse a couple of years ago. An eclipse is an absolutely beautiful event, but it only lasts for a maximum of seven minutes. The odds of being in a spot in the world where a total eclipse happens are pretty slim. It's beautiful, and yet it's rare. Far rarer is when the sun completely stops shining. Scripture tells us about two times, and only two times, that that has ever happened. The first was when the people of Israel were slaves in the land of Egypt. They were forced to do whatever their Egyptian commanders asked them to do. And so they were forced to make bricks with straw. And then, to make it harder, they were forced to make bricks and find their own straw. And because the masters were hard on the people of Israel, God sent someone to liberate them. He raised someone up, and that someone is named Moses. Moses was sent to Egypt to go to the Pharaoh and tell him to let the slaves go. But Pharaoh refused, and so God sent a series of plagues, the ninth of which was a plague of darkness. The sun went dark. The moon did not reflect the light of the sun. Even the stars were not visible. It was completely dark for the Egyptians. Now, over in the land of Goshen, where the Israelites lived, it was still bright. The sun could be seen, but the Egyptians were forced to live in total darkness for three days. Solar eclipses only last seven minutes, but the Egyptians were in the darkness for three days. God was judging them for their sin at the same time that God was at work freeing his people. God was both judging sin and freeing his people. Jesus came into the world and said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of light. We've got the sense that the darkness is scary, right? There's a foreboding that comes in being in the darkness. More crimes happen at night. Kids are more afraid of what might be hiding under their bed or in their closet at night. That isn't to say that no kid has ever imagined a monster under their bed in the daytime, but the odds are much less likely for them to be afraid. We can look up and see strange images and shapes in the cloud during the day and only express wonderment and yet see a strange shape, a shifting shadow in your bedroom or walking down the street at night and your senses go up. You're alarmed, you're ready to fight. Something about the darkness unsettled, unsettles us. And here is Jesus in the middle of all of it saying, I am the light of the world. He calls us away from dark deeds. He calls us away from dark thoughts. He calls us with words to pull us away from dark things. He calls us out of the darkness that we're tempted to dabble in, to stick our toes into the water, and instead stay in his marvelous light. When the sun rose on that first Good Friday, 
Jesus was in front of men who desired to do dark things to him. All through the night, they'd been harassing him, mocking him, inventing trumped-up charges in their midnight courts, and they wouldn't leave him alone until finally, as the sun rose, they took him to Pontius Pilate, but it was there, after the sun rose, that the darkest designs of all were put on display. Pilate gave in to the dark demands of the crowd as Jesus was nailed to that cross on that first Good Friday. And the sun rose higher and higher in the sky until it reached its highest point at noon on that Good Friday. And there from its apex, when its bright was lightest of all, Luke tells us that the sun's light failed. It failed for three hours until the dying breath of our Lord. The sky was as black as the night sky. This was no eclipse. It was no solar flare. This was an act of God. It was as if the sun, which was created through Jesus, right? God spoke his word and said, let there be light, and he created all of these created things. It's as if that very created sun was reeling at how created beings were treating its maker. Here God was judging sin, just like he did in Egypt Here is God judging your sin and my sin. Jesus, who became sin for us and was nailed up on a tree. Here is God judging sin and, just as he did in Egypt, also freeing people. In this case, freeing you and me from the sin for which Jesus was dying setting us free through the death of his son. That light, Jesus Christ, was taken off of that cross. As the sun was going down, he was placed into a dark tomb, a hole in the ground. And there he was left to stay, presumably forever. Yet in the darkness of that grave, light would shine again after three days. Here it is, the light of the world shining that no tomb could hold back. That light shone brightly and the stone from the tomb was rolled away. The world seen that light shining brightly once more for you and for me. Death couldn't hold on to him. Death couldn't keep its dark grip on Jesus because he is the light of the world. And Jesus still shines today because he is the light of the world. In the book of Revelation, John tells us of Jesus, our light, standing and talking with him. His whole body is shining, but he specifically focuses in on Jesus' face that he describes as shining like the sun. That's the light that you and I have in the face of death. The death of a loved one, death in the world around us, or considering our own mortality. That is the light that we have in the darkness of death, the light of Jesus, the sun shining on us. It's the hope that is ours tonight that light that we have as we look on our own death, that light as Jesus comes for his people, that light that even as God is judging sin, he is also setting free. That by the darkness, our light Jesus who suffered would overcome and that we would be healed. God bless you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen.